decided to join us. I'm glad that you guys have decided to take part in this. So the plan is that we will watch this lesson. Um, we'll watch it together. And then at five o'clock, you can log on to the app Zoom uh, using the code that should have went out um, earlier. And we will all kind of join together. We'll have a time where we can hang out, where we can fellowship, where we can um, maybe play a game. And, and hopefully I'll be able to split you guys off into your small groups and you'll have that time together as well, a little social interaction. So let me pray and then we're going to get started with our lesson. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you and we praise you uh, for your sovereignty. Uh, we praise you, Lord, that we have this opportunity uh, to meet together, even though it's not a normal uh, youth group meeting. We're just grateful for the technology that we have that allows us to do things like this, Lord. Um, and we pray that, that as we navigate this uh, different circumstance, um, that as the world just seems to be um, crumbling and seems to be um, kind of falling out of sorts around us, that, uh, that we wouldn't have the fear and anxiety that we see in the world, but instead we would rest in the hope that we have in you, the hope that we have in Christ, uh, and, and know that we don't have to have those fears and anxieties, that we can cast our worries on you and just know that that our, our eternity, regardless of what happens in this world, that our eternity is secure in you. So I pray, Lord, that as we go through this lesson, that as we go, as we open the word of God together, that you would uh, give me the words to speak and that you would give us all just an understanding of your word and just a desire uh, to rest in it. And we just love you and praise you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. All right. So today we're going to be talking about something that affects every single one of us, every single one of us, and that's fear. Yes, we all have fears and we all have worries. Some of you are afraid of spiders, some of you are afraid of snakes, some of you might be afraid that school is never going to resume again. Um, you homeschoolers are going, man, how come I'm afraid that that I'm never going to get a break like all these other kids are getting breaks. Um, some of you might have a fear of the coronavirus as you've watched the news and you've watched everything going on around you. You have a fear of what's going on. But let me, let me tell you personally um, that I, I still have a fear of catching this strange fever that they refer to as Bieber fever. All right. I don't know if you've ever seen what happens to these people that get Bieber fever, but they absolutely lose their minds and just start screaming like crazy and freaking out. So my only theory is that it must be some type of fever that attacks the neurological system and just makes people crazy. So that, that's, that's my fear. All right. In all seriousness, we all struggle when things don't go according to plan. And this isn't just when the coronavirus is shutting things down. I mean, because look, look at the world. The reality is nothing in the last week and a half has gone according to our plans. I mean, I starting last Thursday when kind of the world just, just started shutting down and we started creating these different plans to, to navigate the situation and having meetings to navigate the situation, we would get something set and then it would get restricted even further and restricted even further and we set a new direction and, and our plans just kept getting thrown aside and we'd have to reconvene and refigure something else out. So nothing has gone according to plan. You guys have had schools shut down, athletics being canceled, um, this entire social distancing things, not being able to see and hang out with friends as much as you did before. I mean, to be honest, I'm an introvert and it's making me absolutely crazy, all right? Uh, but it's not just right now in the midst of this whole coronavirus thing that fear can strike. It could be when you get the rejection letter from your number one choice for a college uh, when your mom and dad are fighting and you hear the word divorce, 
or when a family member is diagnosed with cancer, the fear of not getting a good grade, the fear of missing out, all right? Or there's this, this fear that just developed last week that Marissa might put on the beard in the wig and dress up as Riss Ross again, all right? There's those fears that are out there. So what do we do when that happens? What do we do when we find ourselves in the middle of a storm and we can't see the end in sight? Isn't that where we find ourselves right now? All right, this whole coronavirus has our normal lives flipped upside down. Nothing seems normal anymore. We're not operating how we normally would operate. And we find ourselves in this weird place of not seeing an end in sight either. All right, we, we don't know when the restrictions are gonna be lifted. We don't know if there's more restrictions coming. We don't know the complete and full effect that it's gonna have on the economy, how it's gonna affect day-to-day -day life moving into summer and things like that. There's a whole lot of unknowns and we don't, we don't have an end in sight. So how do we operate? How do we, how do we function when the temptation is to be paralyzed by these fears. All right, so confession time. Some of you know this and some of you don't, but I have a fear of public speaking. I always have. Uh, my hands, my hands get ice cold, ice cold, and they get really shaky. And I used to get to the point where I would feel like I'm going to pass out. And as I've, I've learned to understand that fear, as I've learned to navigate through that fear, it has not completely gone away, uh, but I, I've, I've begun to understand what the fear is about. And the fear is, ultimately, it's about being up in front of people and being afraid of making a complete fool of myself. All right, so it's a fear of man, if you will. Uh, but as I've done this more and more, as I've made a fool of myself more and more, it becomes easier and easier. Um, and I, that's a healthy fear, right? Come on. But regardless of if our fears are healthy or not, we have fears. So that's exactly what we're going to talk about. So let's start with the definition of fear. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. So let me ask you, what do you do when you're confronted with something that's dangerous or with something that might cause you pain? Where do you turn when the threat of pain stares you right in the face. Now I realize that most of you turn to your friends or your family for help. My guess would be sometimes that they have really great advice, that they can help you navigate a tough situation. But other times, other times not so much. Sometimes they straight up just have bad advice. Or shall I say, they yeet you bad advice. So one of the cool parts about pre-recording things is I don't have to see all your eye rolls and reactions, Carly Breckel. Sometimes people are there to help and sometimes there is nothing that they can do. Absolutely nothing that they can do. Which can make us feel very alone through a very difficult time. So I hope that I can encourage you. I hope that you will know that no matter what it is that's causing you distress or pain or sleepless nights, that no matter how big or how hopeless a situation may be, that there is hope, that there absolutely is hope in that situation. So please turn to Psalm 46, Psalm 46 in your Bibles. So this Psalm was written during a time of problems, stress, a time of uncertainty, and uh, you might be saying, well, that, that sounds like life since last Thursday, since all this started taking place, the whole world since 
Last Thursday has been a time of problems, stress, and uncertainty. And that's absolutely true. And that's, that seems like this is where the writer of the psalm is coming from, where it looks like things are just crumbling all around him. And in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the storm, he tells us that we can depend on God. That we can depend on God no matter how bad things get. So follow along as I read. We're going to start with verses 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3. God is our refuge in strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. All right, so nobody knows exactly who wrote this psalm, but historically it's thought that Hezekiah is possibly the author. And he wrote it in regards to God's deliverance of Jerusalem over the Assyrians. A time when they were facing invasion, a time when they were facing death, a time when they were facing slavery, and a time when they were facing annihilation. So let me read that one more time, and I want you to look at it from that context. The context of, um, of Jerusalem just facing this time of invasion, death, slavery, the struggle there. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. Alright, so amid whatever we're feeling right now, God wants to be our refuge. He wants to be our strength. And He wants to be our help. And if you're like me, Sometimes you really need it. When our world is, come, is crashing down around us, God is still there. And he is still protecting us. So that word refuge, that word refuge in there, literally means to flee. As in running to a shelter. God wants, wants us to run to him for protection. So picture it like a young child. Picture it like a four-year-old Brenner Powers or a four-year-old Cora running to their parent to protect them from a monster or something along those lines. The incredible safety that's felt within them. We can run to God and say, protect me in the same way. He is our refuge. And besides being our, a refuge, God is our strength. He is saying that no matter what, we can rely on his strength. Especially when we feel weak, when we feel defenseless, and when we, when we feel helpless. Then he goes on and says uh, that God is always ready to help. It doesn't matter when, where, or why. God is there for you. And because of that, we will not fear. So think about it. Think about, think about that for a minute. If God is your refuge, if God is your strength, the all-powerful, the almighty creator and sustainer is your strength. Your strength. What do you really have to fear? I want to take a minute. I want us to jump down to verse 10. So we're going to jump ahead, a little out of order, just for a second. And I want you to look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And we know that when God says something, we know that when he makes a promise, God always keeps his promise. So when God says, be still and know that I am God, we know that we can be still. We can trust him. So the picture here is, is of us letting our hands just fall down to our sides. Letting our hands fall down to our sides and leaving it in the hands of God. And trusting 
in his sovereignty. Right? There's a lot, there's a lot going on in your life. There's a lot going on in the world right now that could be causing you to, to lose sleep. That could be causing you to be nervous, that could be causing you to be anxious, or be causing you to be fearful. But are you willing to let go? Are you willing to be still? Are you willing to be still and allow God to do his thing? To rest in his sovereignty. The psalmist goes on to tell us why we should trust God. So let's jump back up from verse 10 to verse 4. We're going to read 4 through 9. And let's just look at how powerful God is. And he covered this a little bit in the first couple verses as well. But let's look at 4 through 9. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when the morning dawns. The nations rage. In other versions it says the nations are in chaos, much like we see them now. The kingdoms totter. He, God, utters his voice, and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations upon the earth. He makes wars to cease, to, end, to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. In these verses, we get some very vivid pictures of God's power, and they serve as a reminder that His power is greater than any problems we will ever face. His power is greater than any problems that we will ever face. Is His power greater than earthquakes? Absolutely. Is his power greater than the ocean? No question. Is his power greater, greater than my friend problems? Yup. Is his power greater than the coronavirus? Absolutely. Is his power greater than diseases, sicknesses, or even cancer? Yes. That is why we can, we can be still and know that he is God. Because he is greater than all of my problems. He is greater than all of your problems. All of our struggles. All of our heartaches. And all of our pain. So what help do you need tonight? What are you going through? What do you fear? What, is, what causes anxiety? Trust God. He is bigger. Be still and trust Him. We have a hope in a God that is bigger than it all. Through Christ, through Christ, we have a future that goes beyond this temporary world. A glorious future that we can keep our focus on and keep our perspective within Keep our focus and perspective on Christ. I love what Paul says about affliction in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 17 through 18. And we know uh, that when Paul writes about affliction, uh, that when he's writing to these churches about affliction, we know that he faced um, far beyond what we can even fathom in our day and in, in our cultural context. Uh, we know that the early church faced heavy persecution, that Paul faced beatings, that he faced shipwreck, that he went with and without, and that he, that when they're talking about uh, persecution and circumstances, uh, the way that he's going to talk about them here, that it's, it's, it's serious business. 
And this is what he says in chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. For this light, momentary affliction, this light, momentary affliction, is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are unseen are eternal. So we need to have that perspective. So I'm going to close this in prayer. I hope that you take the time to join us on Zoom and that we can uh, just have a time of fellowship together, a time of discussion on what we just, what we just talked about. So let me pray. Uh, we'll be done. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for uh, your sovereignty. We praise you for your greatness. That we truly can trust in you. That you are greater than all of these stresses. That you are greater than all of these circumstances. That you are greater than, uh, than these temporary and momentary afflictions. And we are grateful, Lord, that we have a hope, a hope in Christ that goes beyond this world. We know, Lord, that, um, that when we became Christ followers, that we were not promised a life free of affliction. We know that we weren't promised a life free of trials. But what we are promised is a hope through those things. A future that goes beyond this. So we pray, Lord, that you would give us a peace through these circumstances, that we'd be able to be a light to those around us because of the hope that we have through Christ. We don't have to respond in fear because we know you are greater than all of it. So we just love you and praise you. And it's in your son's precious name we pray. Amen.